Oh, hello. <laughs> Welcome yeah, we're to going. the Carlton Heatherly Oxford show. What we're going to show here today is um, uh, columns and how they fail. And there are two types of failures in columns. One is buckling, and we're going to demonstrate that with this little model here, where the moment of inertia is not sufficient enough, so the column ends up buckling right in the middle there. And the second type of failure is crushing. And this has nothing to do with the moment of inertia. It's just too much weight is being put on the column, too much PSF. And what happens is it's properly supported on every side. And it just, you know, crushes. And Vanessa, if you'll help me out here. She's going to properly support it again. There's nothing to do, it has nothing to do with the moment of inertia, it's just too much weight. And so the column just ends up crushing. Good job. <laughs> okay. So how can we prevent, uh, what we want to demonstrate today is how to prevent the buckling failure. And so what we've done is we've taken the same amount of material as in this column and we've just rearranged it into, say, an I beam or an I column, I guess, whatever you call it. And so what this does is it increases the moment of inertia by spreading out the cross-sectional area to the ends. And so what you'll, what you'll notice is when the same amount of weight, and I'm only putting about maybe a pound of force on this as, as when I was putting on to the, uh, the regular column, um, that this I-beam does not bend. It's not bending at all. And uh, that's due to the increased mo moment of inertia that we've created with this uh, I-beam. Uh, and again with this one, I'm putting just, it's just taking one pound of force, I guess, to make this bend. And uh, but with this one, we've uh, increased the column strength just by, uh, we've increased the moment of inertia in this column just by spreading it out. So, there you go. Good job, Wade.